Hello, so let's begin with this problem. Next permutation. Well, in this problem, it says given an array of integers ARR, representing a permutation, implement the next permutation that rearranges the number into the lexicographically next perm next trader permutation. If no such permutation exists, rearrange the numbers into the lowest possible order, that is the ascending order. So the language of the question might, uh, might sound a little verbose, but it is very like simple. So let me tell you with an example, and then you'll understand it better. The question is trying to say that here is this array given, which has one, two, three, six, five, four. All right. Let's suppose we have this array. Now we would want to give its next permutation. All right. Well, the answer is given here. And you can see a little arrangement has been shifted. But for which order and how did we get to this? Well, for that, you must realize what do we mean by next permutation. Let me take up in a small example to give you a better view of this question. Let's say we have one, two, three. Okay three numbers and we have to make permutations of it let's say i make the other one the next permutation this and then i make two one three then two three one then three goes at the front and i make three one two then i make three two one all right well these are all the possible combinations right because how because how many possibilities could be there three factorial which means six and these are the six possibilities now if you clearly observe you can see a pattern here I have arranged all of these elements in lexicographically and like if you call it a numeric value in increasing order. All right. Lexicographically uh, means that we are arranging that in a dictionary pattern. But if you try to understand it in this manner that we are dealing numbers the same way we deal the alphabets. All right. One comes uh, first and then comes two, then comes three. So one, uh, one, two, three is actually before one, three, two. Then comes two, one, three. And then comes 231. After that, 312 will come, and then 321 will. And if you just want to consider it in terms of integers, then you can see these are in increasing order. Now, how can you perform these permutations? Well, it's quite easy. You can use recursion if you want to, then you can permute all of these. And this actually could be our brute force solution. That in this sequence, we prepare uh, we prepare our, our logic of permutation and any permutation that is given, let's suppose this one, we compose all of this as an answer and we compare that which permutation that we have in a question and we'll, uh, let's say it was 2, 2, 1, 3. Then we would directly give the next permutation which is 2, 3, 1, 2. Okay, this is what we mean by next permutation. It means in additionally, just after that, which rearrangement would come. Now here are a few observations. Okay, let me give you uh, another example which will explain that better to you. Assume this is uh, a number or this is an array you can consider and you want to find the next permutation of it. Well, let's say 5, 2, 4, 3, 1 are the numbers. If I have to just say what could be the just next value to it. Okay, so 5 would be there, 2 would be there, but here 4, 3, 1. Can you possibly have any permutation? that is just beyond it because just three numbers are there out of these four is the biggest and three and one like this completely is present in descending order okay so any permutation that you try to make of these three numbers let's suppose you have three one four or one four three every permutation you make of these numbers would be something smaller or something which has already occurred in the dictionary order that means we cannot make the next permutation with these three numbers we have to include this digit, this digit 2. So once we try to include that, what element could be placed here that can be the just next element to it? Well, we cannot have any smaller value than 2, else everything would be like if my lexicographical order is in this direction, uh, like flowing towards downwards, and I say my word is written here. Well, if I place 1, it would be way upward. If I place, let's say, 4, then it would be way downward. The correct uh, number that should be placed here is going to be 3, which is just bigger than 2. Okay? So let me try to place 3 here. Okay, my first thing is done. I've placed 3. And let's say I'm swapping these two values. So this is my new number. Is it exactly the one that we want? Because 
in the range like 52431 and 53421. There are few more permutations which actually can occur. Which ones are those? Considering that this is this part is fixed for an X permutation, we have to work on this part now. Again, you can see 4 to 1. It's, this is occurring in our descending order. Well, if you try to make uh, any other permutation, it will be smaller. And we are just trying to find the next permutation. That means we don't want bigger values. We want the closest next. That means we need to shorten this value as much as we can. And how can we shorten any combination? Or I must say permutation. How can I shorten any permutation? In these terms, in these terms, if I have to lower the magnitude value, so like seeing these values as digits, then I can say if I rearrange these as in ascending order, I would gain the smallest number out of it, like this. Out of these three digits, if I have to find the smallest number, I'll just put these uh, digits in ascending order, like this. These two would remain like that. And this is how I can say that I have derived this permutation, which now will be, which actually is now, the next permutation of this number that is given to us. So I hope now you have started to get the intuition of the question. What do we know? What do we want? We don't want to create all the permutation so that we can, out of the bunch, we can pick up the next permutation. That would be a very high complexity going to factorials. We don't want that. We want to deal with the question by observing the nature of change, uh, the nature of change that is occurring in between two permutations. Okay. That is what we have observed and just by the basic logic we have said and we have derived how we are going to pick up our next permutation. Let's take up uh, another big example so that it would be completely clear to you. We will be starting with the permutation that is given to us taking this permutation as an example 241750. Now we need to find out a particular point from which we actually have to calculate our next permutation. So now can, if you want to like if you have to see closely till what point actually I have my uh, you know like completely descending order till this point from this point I have a completely descending order okay that means if I try if I have to change it I need to change this element if I have to make a new permutation I have to change this particular element okay so I will be calling this element as a pivot element fine and what is this it is the rightmost element that is smaller than its next element, 7. Once I have found this element, then the other thing is going to be, I need to find an element which is just bigger to this one. Just, uh, just bigger to this one. That means the nearest greater element present in this right side. So for our, like in our case, we have 5 here. Okay. Which is just next to 1. What is the one thing that we need to do? First of all, we need to swap these two values. So once we swap these values, it would look something like this. Still now is the work done? Well, we have these many elements, remember? And these are still set in a descending order. We need to correct, uh, like we need to correct its order. How will we do that? We will simply reverse this part or like we will convert into an ascending order if you want to say it like that. So once I've converted this and, uh, and uh, my whole number, is now what have it become it is the next permutation of our previous initial starting number this sequence will be my answer pretty intuitive let's see the code of it so that this problem gets clearer in your head well here's the code for the same what am i doing first of all i'm just checking uh just keeping the track of my length in this variable n then i have kept my pivot element initialized to it with negative one because there could be a few scenarios in which i do not get any uh, any pivot element and those scenarios are going to be when I have a complete, you can say a complete descending order number. In this case, I would not encounter any pivot. Well, this is actually the corner case. Once I have exhausted all the permutations and I do not have any next permutation, I would go to the very first, uh, like very first in the sequence. That means if you want to see here, let's suppose I am given three to one. I cannot make any next permutation. That means at this point, I would print the first one, the very, the, the very foremost lexica uh, lexicographical order uh, permutation of it. That is what we are doing here. I am keeping my pivot minus 1. If this loop follows and I find a pivot, pivot element will be updated. If I do not find any, then it would be negative 1. Quite simple. So for finding the pivot, I am just traversing in the reverse direction. And what am I doing here? I am simply checking that if my ith element 
is smaller than the next element that I have. That means i plus 1th element. Okay, if that is so, then I would make that the, uh, the pivot element and I would break out of the loop because now I have to do all the work with my pivot element. Just keeping a small check here. If my pivot is negative, I'll uh, completely reverse the array and I would return it because that is going to be the answer, right? The like first lexicographical permutation of the of this particular sequence. Then I have this loop. What is this doing? This is finding up the perfect value to, sw uh, to swap our pivot with. All right, so what is going to be the perfect value, which is the just next greater element to it. All right, so that is what we are doing. I'm uh, traversing my array again till the pivot element in the negative direction. That means from right to left. And what am I doing? I'm checking that if my ARRI, if that is greater than my pivot element, if that is so, then I would simply swap the values. Okay, the moment I've swapped the values, I'll break out of the loop. My work there is done. The last thing that I have to do is I have to reverse the array. From which point? From pivot plus one to n minus one. All right, all the leftover digits that we have, we need to make the sequence of those as ascending order. That is what we are doing. Okay, left to right, uh, we are just reversing it. And once we reverse it, it would become in the, ascend, uh, so in the ascending order only. All right, so if we try to analyze the complexity of this uh, approach, how would it be? Well, for this element, you can say it's order of n. If we did not find anything, and we will simply return it. Or considering this is taking order of n, and this iteration is going to be taking order of n again, and if you're reversing it, that roughly could be order of n as well. In general, we are not exceeding this exponent. What we are having is the time complexity that we would have is going to be order of n. We are not taking any extra space as well. We are just swapping the elements and reversing them. Thus, the space complexity of the solution is going to be order of 1. Okay, so here's the code. Let's try to run the code and see if it is working fine. Okay, so now I've compiled the code. Let's see if that gives us the correct output. Yeah. It is giving us the expected output. All right, now let's submit that and test it against all the test cases. Okay, so it has passed all of the test cases. I hope now you have got this uh, problem and if you have understood the solution well, well, do tell me in the comments and if you find it difficult anywhere, do try to rewatch it. Just take up an example and try to try it on the code, this part mainly, and uh, you would be un understanding it very well. Okay, so thanks for watching.